Tonight, new concerns inside the U.S. defense community over a Russian military satellite exhibiting some very strange behavior. Our Brian Todd is on the story for us. Brian, why are officials keeping an eye on this particular piece of equipment? It's very interesting. It is, Jim. They're doing that because this satellite seems to have done something that U.S. officials admit they have never seen before. It has birthed two other satellites, according to experts, and they're worried the Russians could use it as a weapon in space. Blasting off from a Russian cosmodrome, a Soyuz rocket surges into space. Its payload, a military satellite shrouded in mystery. That was in June of last year. Tonight, space and military analysts are investigating whether that satellite is the same one which a top U.S. arms control official said this week was exhibiting, quote, abnormal behavior. When you look at the entire Russian catalog, this satellite and, and its, uh, its children are the ones that, that jump out as the ones that are uh, acting in an unusual way. The satellite's children, experts at the firm Analytical Graphics, who've analyzed this satellite, believe the larger Russian satellite, quote, birthed a smaller satellite a couple of months later. Then, a couple of months after that, the smaller Russian satellite birthed an even smaller satellite. Almost like a Russian nesting doll. The Russian Ministry of Defense even announced the first birthing, saying the smaller satellite would, quote, inspect the condition of the larger one. But experts are worried the Russians could be testing it out for military purposes. The fact that it's the MOD announcing it, the, the Ministry of Defense announcing that, and it's a secret mission, clearly that's, even if it's a test satellite, it, it's got some kind of military purpose in what it's testing. What kind of military purpose? The Pentagon and U.S. Air Force Space Command won't say specifically what they believe the Russian satellites could do. But tonight, a U.S. military official tells CNN the Russians and other adversaries have turned space into a, quote, warfighting domain. You could see the evolution of that technology in that a single satellite could then sort of give birth to multiple smaller satellites, which would principally be potentially kinetic weapons. Of course, we're thinking later on to the future. This possible threat is one reason why the Trump administration has been pushing so hard for a so-called space, space force. U.S. military officials have told CNN the Russians have already developed a satellite called Cosmos 2499. They've nicknamed it Kamikaze because they say it could at some point have the capability to go on the attack and slam into American satellites. Experts say the Russians could use satellites to jam American satellites, intercept or disrupt crucial communications. A lot of our uh, image surveillance reconnaissance means are space-based, so it's really more uh, United States' ability to see in support of its forces that potentially threaten. The Russians are flatly denying the U.S. assertion that they're trying to weaponize satellites. The same unfounded, slanderous accusations based on suspicions, on suppositions, and so on and so forth. In denying that they have weaponized satellites, the Russians are, are again pressuring the Americans to join a treaty that would ban weapons in space. The U.S. government has resisted joining that treaty, saying there's no way to verify that Russia and China are curtailing their weapons, and U.S. officials say the treaty has too many loopholes to allow those countries to actually build their weapons capability, Jim. Looks like we have a genuine arms race in space going on right now. Very worrying development. Brian Todd, thank you very much. I want to give my praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rakah Kodash, to give me the spirit to do this video. As you see in the videos before, you see the satellites, man. Okay, these satellites, if you have a satellite called the Nestic, now when you hear that, a certain scripture is supposed to come to your mind, okay, when they call the satellite the Nestic. That's not by accident, that's not a coincidence, it's through the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai. Okay, they put the spirit on those Russians to call it the nesting. And whether it's called the nesting or not, speaking of satellites in general, of the different nations, okay, they're up there nesting. Okay, they still fulfill the scripture that I'm about to read. Okay, but first let's go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Right, man. That's on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side. Everything is subject to the will of Yahweh, man. Okay? Everything. All right? Those Russians' instructions were sealed when they were asleep, and they woke up and said, hey, let's call it the nesting. That's not by coincidence, man. All right? And ultimately, it's used for war. It's going to be used for the big war, man. Okay? Ever since 1957, 
which Russia, at that time the Soviet Union, launched the first satellite, man. All right? And these satellites are going to guide these missiles, man, these nuclear missiles to do its job, man. And a lot of other things, man. It goes back to war. That's why Trump wants a space force. Okay? Because they have other satellites that go up there that scan other nations' satellites, man, to get information, to get the advantage. Okay? This is chess, not checkers, man. Okay? These moves are being made ultimately for war, to be in the best position for war to win the war. Okay? Now, you see in that video when it spoke about the satellite that the U.S., NATO, the EU were concerned about, these satellites can birth other satellites, man. So they launch one satellite, you think it's one satellite, all of a sudden, others appear out of that satellite and out of that satellite. <laughs> you know, that's cold technology. Okay? You see U.S. and them are concerned. But at the end of the day, it's your how about you shot putting all this emotion to bring what? To bring this world down, man. Okay? To bring Esau's world down. Point blank, period. Okay? So back at Proverbs 2024, 20, man's goings are of the Lord. That's where they're on the right-hand side or the left. How can a man then understand his own way? So everything is for the will of your how about you now shot. Now, the main scripture I really want to dig into real quick, Obadiah chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 3. Now, if you start at verse 1, it says concerning Edom, Esau, okay? So it's talking about the Edomites, so-called white man. It says, the pride of thy heart hath deceived thee. Right, the pride of thy heart hath deceived thee. And who is more prideful than Edom, than Esau, than the so-called white race? No one. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Pride is very high. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. But key word, it was given. Okay. Yahweh Shai allowed Esau to do this, man. He allowed him to make these satellites. He allowed him to launch it in the orbit. All for his purpose, not for Esau's purpose. But Esau so stupid, he think it's for his purpose. Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Okay. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, says Yahweh. Right, man. They set their nest among the stars, their eggs, so to speak, their satellites. Okay? So it's no coincidence that they call that satellite the nesting. It's nesting among the stars. To do what? They're doing it to get in better position for this war, man. Okay? Point blank period. They ain't playing checkers, they're playing chess. And they've been doing it over the years since 1957 when you deal with the satellite. That was the first satellite launch into orbit. And ever since then, all these nations, the U.S. and et cetera, et cetera, have been doing it, man. China, all of them, man. North Korea. Okay, I think North Korea launched its first satellite a couple years back, not too, too long ago. Okay, because now they're getting the nuclear power up. Okay, for what? To be in position to win a war, to survive a war. Third World War, which we're in the mix of that happening, man, if you're paying attention, okay? So, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, we know they symbols are the eagle, most of Edom, okay? Because though Russia don't carry the symbol of the eagle, they still doing what the eagle do, all right? Because they're still Edom at the end of the day, all right? And though thou set thy nest among the stars, the nest is the satellites. Now, when you deal with a real eagle, they nest is very high. OK, it's not a regular bird's nest that you play with as a kid. I remember when I was a kid, you climb trees, try to get the egg. I used to do that, man. <laughs> you know, like animals. So as a kid, man, anytime I saw an animal, I tried to get it. I tried to keep it myself, thinking you're going to hatch it. Man, you ain't going to hatch no egg, man. <laughs> oh, man. So you see that when you deal with the eagle, man, they nest is way up there, man. You only see that on these discovery channels. Because Edom is a man in the field. He can't stay at home. He's everywhere. And he's in a helicopter or somewhere up high in the mountain or somewhere. And he finds the eagle's nest, man. Okay? And he puts it on camera for what? For animal planning or whatever. Discovery channel. Other than that, you ain't going to run across no eagle's nest. Why? Because it's very, very high. Which is why it was compared that way in the scriptures, man. It was put that way on purpose. Okay? So these different nations are guarding those satellites like eggs, man. Okay, because it's crucial to make sure their satellites is on point up there. 
okay, and that they had the best satellites. That's why they were so concerned about Russia with the satellite called the nesting that can reproduce up there, another satellite come out, and another satellite come out. Right, man. And who's doing that? Yahab Hashem is putting in mind to do that to what? To have the advantage of war, man. Because everything is going towards what? Babylon being destroyed, man. Okay. So the process of that plays a part of dealing with these satellites in orbit, man. That's a big part of it. Okay. Along with the nukes. All right. All right. From that, let's go to Job chapter 20, verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment, though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Now let's focus in on verse 6. Let's read that again. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens like an eagle, and his head reach into the clouds. Now, when you deal with the word excellency, it goes back to pride. Okay, when you go into that root word, it's talking about his pride. So, though his pride mount up to the heavens, which link up to Obadiah, of what I read, man. Okay, matter of fact, let's go back to Obadiah real quick. Chapter 1, verse 3. The pride of thy heart hath deceived thee. Right, man, his excellency mount to the heavens. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that say in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So his pride, okay, is very, very up there, okay? Back at Job 20, verse 6. Though his excellency mount unto the heavens, his pride, and his head reach unto the clouds. Right, man. Okay, so he's up there, man, because he received this planet through taking over everybody, so you think he's super tough guy. Okay, he received technology, certain technology, okay, that was given to him from Yahweh Shin Shah just to destroy himself. Okay? That's what it is, man. It's set up for him to go down, man. Okay? The Lord said, Thence will I bring thee down, man. So, when Esau and the other nations start putting up satellites in the heavens, that is a sign. When they start nesting up there, that's a sign that they're going down. Okay? The Lord said, Thence will I bring thee down. Okay, but it's a process. Okay, it's not like, you know, 1957, the first settler up there, all of a sudden, oh, they're going down now. No, man, that was a process, another chapter of them going down because that was going to play a part in the nuclear missiles getting dropped all around the planet through using those satellites. Okay, so with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rakan, Kodash, to give me the spirit to do this video. Double honor to the Elves Great Millstone and Shalom to the Akhmat that is doing the truth in sincerity. Shalom. A mysterious Russian satellite is sounding the alarm bells at the State Department. Officials are warning the international community has no way to tell if a satellite could be used as a weapon. Correspondent Wyatt Goolsby has the details from the State Department. Good evening, Wyatt. Good evening, Lauren. Officials here say the Russian satellite is behaving unlike anything they've seen before. Russia insists it is not hostile, but the U.S. is calling on the United Nations to enact stricter measures for what can and cannot be placed into orbit. We don't know for certain what it is, and there is no way to verify it. State Department Assistant Secretary Alem Poblete is raising serious questions about a mysterious Russian satellite at the United Nations in Geneva. How do we verify what countries say their spacecraft, their spacecraft are doing? What would be enough information to prove what the purpose of an object is? Poblete says the U.S. has been monitoring the satellite since its launch in October of last year. The State Department doubts the Russian claim that it's a small inspector spacecraft. In Brazil, Defense Secretary James Mattis pushed for greater defense of U.S. satellites against threats like Russia and China. So we have had to do a lot of work defining the problem. It has to do with 10, 20 years in the future. Where do we want to be? What is our economic dependence on space? What is our intelligence? What do we have to do if we have to make it defensible instead of just putting up satellites? in a benign uh, environment. Mattis, who's on a diplomatic tour in South America, is also emphasizing the U.S. interest in partnering with Brazil in space research, an area in which China has shown growing influence. Some say the U.S. is playing up the Russian satellite to bring attention to the militarization of space. 
The Trump administration has been pushing to create a space force, but has yet to get congressional backing to form what would be an expensive sixth branch of the military. Throughout the week, Secretary Mattis has downplayed U.S. plans to put weapons in space, but he's emphasizing the vital role of satellites, not just in military operations, but in the world economy. That includes phone communications, GPS navigation, and weather information. Lauren? Correspondent Mike Goolsby reporting from the State Department. Thank you.